I would like to call Dr. Oskan Tazinov. He is a PhD on biochemistry from Medical University from Bulgaria. Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for uh, accepting our abstract and the chance that we have here to present our uh, first and preliminary study on um, ferrum phosphoricum. Um, the topic of um, our um, study is ferrum phosphoricum uh, D12 treatment. Uh, it affects uh, macrophages and preadipocyte cell proliferation and uh, gene expression of inflammation, oxidative stress, and iron metabolism related proteins. Uh, our object uh, of our study was uh, ferrum phosphoricum in D12 potency, so called cell uh, salt, the oxygen carrier. Uh, it's uh, used in um, acute phase of uh, inflammation for cold and fever treatment. Uh, here I would like to uh, underline that I'm not a homeopath, I'm just a regular scientist, uh, postdoc. And the colleagues from um, Alpen Farm are the company that represents the uh, Schussel Salts in Bulgaria. They just came and said to us, uh, could you just study this salt for us? We have uh, already established cell culture models on preadipocytes and macrophages. And we just follow the standard procedures that we have uh, did already uh, in our regular work. What we do is usually to analyze the herbal extracts. Uh, so after this clarification, I would continue with the introduction of the uh, ferrum phosphoricum. So that what we uh, used to know uh, at the start of study was it's used in early stage of inflammation and fever. Okay, uh, it's used for prophylaxis of cold and um, flu. It decreases the microbial uh, replication and increases the phagocytosis. It's uh, also used to treat the tissue uh, injuries like burns, uh, sunburns, cuts, wounds, and etc. It's used in uh, muscle fatigue. It improves the oxygen saturation of tissue, which logically should prevent the lactic acid production and should prevent the muscle fatigue and uh, should uh, help the fastest recovery of a tissue. So uh, it's also uh, prescribed in uh, iron deficiency anemia, one of the main points of uh, prescription for, of this uh, remedy. It increases the intracellular iron uh, levels by inducing the iron metabolism. It was said to us. So we have to check a few um, markers related to this um, main points of action of uh, this homeopathic remedy. In the uh, literature, uh, we know that macrophages are the main cells of immune response, of uh, inflammation process. They could be soldiers, they could be also healers. They, could, uh, they are involved in angiogenesis, in tumorogenesis, or in tumor suppression. So, um, there are known two types of M1 and M2 uh, so-called macrophages, respectively classically and alternatively activated ones. Uh, they have pro-inflammatory or anti-inflammatory uh, effect, as we said, respectively, and they differentiate according their uh, type on their iron levels. Expectedly, uh, if they uh, differentiate uh, in their intracellular iron levels, they should have maybe a different expression of um, uh, markers related to iron metabolism, right? like a uh, transferrin receptor, uh, ferritin that uh, stores iron within the cells, ferroportin responsible for export of iron from the cells. Iron response element binding protein was interesting for us as a, a transcription factor that controls the gene expression according to the levels of iron. Respectively, uh, we know that the, the changes in the iron levels also affect the uh, gene expression of the other oxidative stress-related um, proteins, proteins, uh, enzymes from the antioxidant defense, also those related to uh, inflammation. The um, relation of, uh, be between the, uh, the metabolism of macrophages and iron was interesting. And when I looked up the literature, uh, I, I saw that the M2-like uh, anti-inflammatory tumor-associated macrophages, um, they could be triggered um, to transfer from anti-inflammatory to pro-inflammatory M1-like um, pro-inflammatory macrophages 
which are associated with uh, uh, tumors, they can now act not as a tumorogenic, as a tumor suppressors, and now they can uh, provoke the destruction and the elimination of cancer cells from tumors, and this in uh, this, this triggered by the uh, presence of iron oxide nanoparticles, for example, heme iron or hemoglobin, which triggers this transformation from M2 to M1 like uh, tumor associated macrophages. What else uh, uh, was found in literature is that uh, during the maturation of uh, erythrocytes, they should accumulate iron needed for the heme um, and respectively heme needed for hemoglobin uh, for the oxygen transfer. So nurse, so-called nurse macrophages, they are one of the uh, possible cells that can transfer, respectively donate the iron by transferring ferritin uh, mm, to, the, to the pre erythrocytes. This is another compared to uh, transferrin uh, pathway for loading the uh, pre erythrocytes with the iron, which uh, just uh, remind us that uh, maybe that should be one of the bases uh, where the uh, effect of ferron phosphoric in iron deficiency and anemia lies on. So, uh, the ferron phosphoricum um, has uh, two components. If I look on that like as a biochemist, the iron, which is needed for heme proteins like hemoglobin, uh, myoglobin, and neuroglobin. They transfer and store respectively oxygen in, uh, in tissues. Enzymes that are uh, also heme proteins uh, are crucial in the amino acid metabolism like uh, oxygenases, catalase, which is a uh, iron, uh, heme iron containing antioxidant enzyme, the only one in fact containing heme. Uh, resp uh, respiratory chain proteins, which are in the mitochondria and are responsible for the energy production uh, uh, in, the, in the cells and are crucial for their survival. Phosphates is a component of building blocks of DNA RNA, which are nucleotide, especially the ATP I underline here as the main energy molecule within the cells, as we know. Phosphoproteins, phospholipids, structural components of the cell membrane and structures related to. Uh, the regul in the regulation of enzymes as a coenzyme, the phosphates take part. Uh, phosphates are important for high macroergic compounds as creatine phosphate and phosphorenol pyruvate. The bone phosphates needed for the mineralization of bones, irrespectively uh, as, as uh, any ionogenic groups, they maintain the pH homeostasis. So that's what we know from the biochemical point of view for now. And uh, according to this, the aim of our study was to analyze the effect of ferron phosphoricum uh, on the uh, non-stimulated, I should underline these, mouse macrophages and predipocyte cell lines proliferation and gene expression levels of iron metabolism, antioxidant defense, and inflammation-related proteins. The study uh, has two main phases. First was the analyzing of cytotoxicity followed by the experiment analyzing, uh, aiming to analyze the uh, effect on gene expression analysis. Of course, we finish with the statistical analysis in the end. Uh, as I mentioned, we used two types of cell lines from the uh, American type culture collection, macrophages, here you can see them, and the preodipocytes, which are non-differentiated non adipocytes. Uh, cell viability was assessed by the well-known MTT test using the MTT dye. Uh, RNA was isolated using uh, trizol, which is a phenolchloroform based, uh, for those which are familiar with the no, uh, phenolchloroform based method to extract RNA. We use it to synthesize a copy DNA, which is needed for gene expression analysis, which we um, did using the qPCR uh, method. Statistical analysis we performed using GraphPath Prism software. MTT test scheme includes few main steps. We see the cells in certain concentration, then treat them at 24 hours uh, with a ferron phosphoricum tablet or non-potentized empty, I will call it from now, uh, plus placebo tablet. Then uh, we uh, add the MTT dye and at the 48 hour we uh, measure the cell viability. The same procedure we do with the uh, experiment for gene expression analysis. The difference was that at uh, hour 48, we isolate RNA, synthesizing COVID DNA, and then do the gene expression analysis. So coming to the most interesting part, 
maybe, uh, with uh, the result from a cell viability test, which is needed all the time when you test uh, something on a cell cultures. What we observe here in macrophages, in a blue line, which shows the ferron phosphoricum effect, we see the induction of cell proliferation approximately about 13% for some concentration and decrease with approximately 30% for 10 milligrams per milliliter. Other important thing for predipocytes was the similar uh, respectively induction we see of the cell proliferation by ferron phosphoricum. I should underline this that the effect of uh, the empty tablet control was um, opposite to those of ferron phosphoricum which proves that it has an independent effect. The first results on gene expression were on the transferrin receptor. We expected to see some changes, but as you see, there's no statistically significant changes, uh, nor in macrophages, nor in pre sites. Okay, what about ferritin, which is the molecule that stores iron within the cells? Here we observed interesting induction uh, from five to eight fold uh, in macrophages of a gene expression for these certain concentrations. For preadipocytes in 10 milligrams per milliliter, we also see uh, not statistically, but close to significant uh, induction in ferritin. Okay. Iron response element binding protein, as I, I told you, is a transcription factor that responds to the levels of iron. In, uh, when the iron levels are high, it induces the uh, ferritin gene expression. When they are low it, uh, within the cell iron levels, it induces the gene expression of transferrin. What you remember from previous si slide was that we used to have induction in ferritin levels, which maybe suggests that the iron accumulation of the cells, uh, cells are loaded possibly more with iron than before the treatment. To um, continue with the checking of iron metabolism, we uh, analyzed the uh, beta-2 microglobin gene expression in macrophages and also myosin uh, gene expression again in macrophages only. Beta-2 microglobin is responsible for regulation of a heptidine excretion in response of high iron levels. What we see here, it was now uh, induced again in the, by the same concentration that induces ferritin and uh, iron response element transcription factor. L low but still statistically significant decrease in myosin we see. Myosin is a contractile protein, but it is uh, acting mainly inhibitory um, to the transferrin uptake by the cells. Correlation between the trans iron response transcription factor and the beta-2 microglobin additionally proves the meaning of previous results that we get according to iron. What next was interesting and should be uh, paid attention on is the antioxidant enzymes we measured, glutathione peroxidase, and uh, was induced significantly in macrophages. Glutamate cysteine ligase is another enzyme induced significantly in predipocytes. It's responsible for the synthesis of glutathione, which is an uh, antioxidant needed for the action of glutathione peroxidase as an antioxidant enzyme. Coming to the uh, inflammatory markers, the interleukin 1 beta was significantly induced in macrophages. IL 6 was induced in predipocytes. In predipocytes, we also measure significant induction in tumor necrosis factor and NADPH oxidase enzyme, which is pro-oxidant and induced in respiratory bursts at the first stage of inflammation. So just to resume results uh, that we uh, seen, we can say that ferron phosphoricum stimulates proliferation of macrophages and predipocytes significantly in certain concentrations. Ferron phosphoricum induces the gene expression of iron-related protein transcription factors, including uh, and slightly decreases the myosin 1 gene expression in macrophages. In preadipocytes, significantly induces the gene expression of ferritin and again, iron response element binding transcription factor. Ferron phosphoricum stimulates the gene expression of antioxidant enzyme in macrophages and preadipocytes and gene expression of interleukin 1 beta in macrophages and interleukin 6, TNF alpha, and NADPH oxidase in preadipocytes. So, if you can speculate and conclude according to the results we get here, we can say that ferrum phosphoricum uh, has a potency, uh, in D12 potency, may exhibit an immunostimulatory antioxidant and iron uptake uh, potential in non-stimulated mouse macrophages and preadipocytes, possibly by ch inducing the change in gene expression. Uh, therefore, presumably uh, preparing the macrophages for more accurate and faster immune response. 
The, for the future perspectives, uh, the major next step that I and my colleagues think should be done is uh, to test the ferron phosphoricum, but this time uh, not only gene expression, also protein expression uh, of all these markers we already mentioned in uh, cell culture model, or this time lipopolysaccharide, bacterial lipopolysaccharide stimulated macrophages. So we can see how they will uh, react to the treatment in case of uh, the challenge, which are the lipopolysaccharides. So uh, just to thank my team, uh, which I am part of, uh, my colleagues uh, Diana Vankova, Desislava Ivanova, Milena Pasheva, and Associate Professor Joanna Kiselova, and our supervisor and um, leader, Professor Diana Ivanova. We are from the Faculty of Pharmacy, which is a part of Medical University of Varna, Bulgaria. Uh, our sponsors and the supporters of this study are the uh, colleagues from the Alpen Pharma Group uh, in Bulgaria, which are the representatives officially of uh, Schussler Salts uh, made by the uh, DHU. And of course, my family loves London, it's a colorful city. I would like to thank you for your hospitality and uh, your uh, attention. And welcome to Bulgaria, also a colorful country. <laughs> <laughs>